Okay, well, here is a video on the correction for taking the derivative of inverse tangent x minus 1 over x plus u. We made an error today in lecture. Everything so far here is okay. Remember, this is your chain rule portion. Taking the derivative of... Um, x minus 1. We did the work down here, so this one's fine, so that's why it's 2 over x plus 1 squared there. Now, when you did the multiplication right in here, I want to emphasize that the sign here was positive, and so when we multiplied, and then maybe it's better to multiply, you know, this way, if we want to think of it that way, what I did was, if you guys notice, the sign went from positive here to negative right here. Now, that's where the error was today. So, yes, I distributed, multiplied these two terms there, but that term should be positive, not negative. So, that is where the error occurred. So because we have that error, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's going to change your derivative function, obviously. When you use FOIL here and use FOIL here to expand, like we did down here, we expanded using FOIL. But remember, this should be plus, not minus. And so when that's plus, the denominator for your derivative now is going to be 2x squared. We're going to add those two terms. These two terms cancel. 2x squared plus 2, and that numerator is still over 2. So I'm going to factor out the 2 in the denominator. We have 2x squared plus 1. Your 2's will cancel. So ladies and gentlemen, this derivative now is 1 over x squared plus 1. This is the derivative, so this is going to be the correction. And so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's the derivative. Now, they're asking here. Now, I'm going to give you guys a note. This is the derivative. This is the derivative of this function here, the example we went over in class. So, all right. Remember, we want to find where it's increasing or decreasing. We want to find the intervals of incre uh, decreasing and increasing, or increasing, decreasing. So we have to do sign analysis now on that first derivative. Okay. Now, this function is very interesting. Let's go back here and note a couple of things here. The original function here, this is x plus 1 in the denominator. Um, this denominator, this rational, could never be 0. So we're looking at the denominator. We set that equal to 0, and we solve for x. And this is what x can't be. x can't be negative 1. So we throw that value out of the domain. X cannot be negative 1. It could be any other real number, but it just can't be negative 1. So that's out. So if that's out, I just want to emphasize that the derivative at that point does not exist. So at X is negative 1, I want to point out to you that that derivative does not exist there. That value of the function is not in the domain here. It's not in the domain of the function. Now, when you're looking at potential critical points, I guess, we want to we want to remember here at, with this derivative that this fraction here, we want to say, okay, where, where is this derivative equal to 0? And I'll say that never happens. The reason it never happens is because for any fraction to be equal to 0, that, nu that numerator must be 0. 
And so if you said, well, I want to set u equal to zero here, derivative, what you're trying to say is that one over x squared plus one equals zero, and that never happens. Furthermore, um, what else should we say about this? Oh, where's the denominator equal to zero? We can do some sign analysis on this. Well, that never happens either. So x squared plus one, that denominator could never be zero either. So y prime is never zero. The denominator is never zero. So when we perform sign analysis on this first derivative, if I can do this, we have a lot of information to work with. So I think I'm going to just take all this down here, move it down. Okay, these are some of the notes from class today. I'm just going to fix this problem here. Copy that. Let's go all the way down here. All right. So for sign analysis, on that first derivative, we already know that negative 1 does not exist. So we have region 1 and region 2. We're going to do sign analysis on that first derivative. The denominator is never 0. x squared plus 1 could never be 0. So we need test points. To the left, we'll use negative 2 as a test point. To the right, we'll use 0 as a test point. We're just going to plug these in. So if I plug in negative 1 here, for example, negative 1 squared is positive 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, so y prime will be 1 half. Well, that's a positive 1 half. So region 1 is positive here. If I use the test point of 0 now, meaning we're looking at the the test point values down here. Let's put zero. We get zero squared plus one is one. One over one is positive one. And ladies and gentlemen, we get a region two that's also positive. And so this represents an increasing slope, an increasing slope from sign analysis so what's going on here in conclusion is this curve f is increasing over the interval negative infinity up to negative one union negative one up to infinity and that is it nothing else so that's the conclusion using some of the algebra you got an increasing function there So when you look at the picture in Desmos, and we said, okay, we looked at Desmos, and we went, what's going on with Desmos here? Um, I guess we lost it. Y equals inverse tangent, I believe it's X minus 1, and I need a, another parenthesis, I think. X minus 1 divided by X plus one, I'm gonna change the color as well. All right. And I might even change if I could. I mean, we could leave it like that, how's that? And I'm gonna bring it in just to kind of share with people. Should bring all of it in? Yeah, let's bring this in. So let's kind of look at this picture here and show people what's going on here. As you guys can see, negative 1 would be, oh, well, let's use this here, I guess over here. And looking at the graph here, we have 
that's where negative one is. So we don't include negative one. Um, see this line here? We don't include values of x and negative one. Um, increasing, certainly, this is an increasing situation from values of x for, to the left of negative one up to negative one. And then this is increasing as well from negative one to positive infinity. So we do see an increasing graph. So this sign analysis is correct. This derivative is correct. And really, that's answering the question that we asked today. However, I'm going to give you a little extra, right? Just a little extra. What about the intervals of concavity? Um, you need that sign analysis on the second derivative. So we need that first derivative. It's right over here. Let's spring this. Take the derivative of this function. And we don't have the right notation. There we go. I guess we leave things out when we copy it. So let's take the derivative of this function and then do sign analysis. And okay, second derivative now. It's the derivative of the first derivative. Now we can use quotient rule here if we like, or I'm going to use power rule with chain rule here. Okay, so that's negative 1 times x squared plus 1 uh, to the minus 2 power times the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus 1. And over here, this would be our 2x. So we get negative 2x over x squared plus 1 squared now for the second derivative. Now notice again here, if we do sign analysis on this, the numerator, um, don't know what color, we set the numerator equal to 0. And... That means 2x is 0 or x equals 0. And then we set the denominator equal to 0. And that could never be 0. So kind of just like before, we have x squared plus 1 squared equals 0. That implies that x squared plus 1 has to be 0. And then that never happens. not for any real number. We need a real number value, because if you try to solve this, you get x squared is negative one. Using the square root formula, you get complex numbers, right? That's why we say it never happens, really for any real number. So let's remember sign analysis. Let's be careful now here. The function still is not at negative one, it's not defined at negative one. It doesn't have a derivative at negative one. It doesn't have a second derivative at negative one. That does not exist. So we can put um, at negative one and at zero for the second derivative. Um, at zero, the second derivative is actually zero and at negative one, it does not exist. And we're going to say here, region 1, region 2, region 3, we need some test points. So negative 2 is a test point. Negative 1 half is a test point. Positive 1 is a test point. So let's do our sign analysis on the second derivative now, okay? 
So we're going to plug in these test point values. Um, if I plug in negative 2 here, remember the denominator is always going to be positive down here. This will be positive if I get the highlighter. Because negative 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 1, you know, you have uh, is 5, 5 squared, that's a positive number. But then you have, don't forget, negative times that negative 4 over here, which would be positive. So region 1 here is positive, which means it's concave up, holds water, your curve. In region 1, concave up, right? Let's test negative 1 half now. Plug in negative 1 half. And negative 1 half here. The denominator is going to be positive. Square a negative number, it's positive. Add 1 to it. And then square it again. Well, that's positive. Um, this is what I'm saying. The denominator is positive. It'll always be positive. It's the numerator that'll be positive or negative. And again, you got a negative times a negative. So region 2 is positive, concave up, holds water. Let's test region 3 with a 1. Put your test point here of 1. And the denominator yet again, like we said, that will always be positive because x squared plus 1, and then squaring that again, doesn't matter what number is, is there. But now you have a negative 2, I think you have a negative times 2 times 1, well, that'll be a negative value. So the second derivative is negative in region 3. And what that means, it does not hold water. Okay, concave down. Let's get rid of some of this stuff that's not necessary. So if we had to draw a conclusion here, right? Let's write down what this means uh, for the function. F is concave up on the intervals negative infinity up to negative 1 union negative 1 up to 0 f is concave down on 0 to infinity Maybe I can move this. Let's see if we made any more mistakes or if we're fine. All right, let's see if we're fine or if we made any mistakes. Um, let's look at the curve, right? So this is this is the regions where you have concave up, region one, and region two, and then concave down for region three. So if I go to the curve here, sure enough, you can see in the curve right over here. Holding water, concave one, that's region one. And then up to zero, right in here. We go concave up, concave down. It changes concavity. So that means, if you guys remember, there's an inflection point here. So just kind of give you some details. Concave up here. Concave up concave down, right? So inflection point at the origin, and that makes sense because that's the definition. Let me try to find something. This is you change concavity right in here at zero. So let's add that. You have an inflection point as well. So we'll say you have an inflection point. At zero, F is zero. Or at zero, remember the original function. Say, what's the original function? Oh my God, we gotta go all the way up over here. I think I remember the original function. Here we go. Bring it. An inverse tangent. X minus 1 over X plus 1. So, 
I'm going to bring that down just to kind of emphasize something here for you guys here. Right? You can say if this is y or f of x. Plug in 0 here. Um, so that value, which is really f of 0 that we're talking about, is inverse tangent. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. So that's inverse tangent of really negative 1, because negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. And that happens to be, ladies and gentlemen, going back to trigonometry, negative pi over 4. So we can write down the inflection point here at negative pi over 4. So here's some extra information about the curve. And if we look at the curve here in Desmos, we brought it in. That's where 0, and this will be negative pi over 4, by the way. That's your inflection point. At the end, this will be negative pi over 4, that value. The y-coordinate value. I'm trying to indicate that. Um, and I already know what some people are going to say. You're going to say, hey, Mr. Judge, I have not taken trig in 25 years. How in the world did we get negative pi over 4? Right over here. And I'll say, you're going to let theta be inverse tangent of negative 1. And then that means tangent theta equals negative 1. And, you know, where is tangent negative? Well, let's think. All students take calculus. So tangent is negative in really quadrant. This is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So we have two places where can tangent is negative. Quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. However, if we're in the world of inverse tangent, inverse tangent's good only for angles between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. I think we restrict the domain here, right? So that's quadrant really 1 and 4. So this is why we'll have a negative, um, a negative answer, negative one. The, the reference angle here is pi over four. So you might go back to trig and say, I need the, the reference angle here. Where, where is, where is tangent of your reference angle one? Well, that's a quadrant one angle. And. 1 over 1, so the reference angle here for a right triangle, so those people who want to review some of that trig, okay, this is what happens in trig, opposite over adjacent, square root of 2, that means that reference angle is pi over 4. But the angle is really in quadrant 4 because this is a negative value. This is the reference angle, although this is tangent theta of tangent theta equals negative one. So it's this negative value here. Negative angle, negative pi over four. So this goes back to a trigonometry course, and that's why you have the answer negative pi over four. That's why the inflection point is at zero, negative pi over four, right in here. This is the whole point going over every detail. Giving you a little extra. It's a second derivative asking you about concavity since we're looking at some of the guidelines for kind of curve sketching um, for an inverse tangent curve. There's all the gory details. Devil's in the details, but the good news is you took calculus one. If I can get this pen to work, there you go. It loses whatever it loses. This is our inflection point. At 0, negative pi over 4. That's the address. And this is just really calculus 1 now applied to a new function that we get a derivative formula for. Okay? 
And sorry, we went too far. So anyway, first derivative, sign analysis with the conclusion. Um, there is the graph. And then we get the second derivative here with our sign analysis and our conclusion of this sign analysis. And the picture is worth a thousand words. And I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, take care. Stay safe. Have a wonderful day. Wonderful evening. All right. There we go. I guess we'll leave it there. Okay.